Let's talk about division. So first, let me ask you a question. What do you think comes to your mind when you hear the word divide or division? Even if you are not learning any mathematics, just in the English language, what does the word divide or division bring to your head? Either pictures, words, other concepts. Just write that down. I know I'm not there with you, but I really want you to try this. This is how you can grow your understanding of something. So truly answer the question, draw a picture, whatever you need to think about. Okay, close your eyes and what do you think comes to your head when you hear the word divide or division? Assuming you have something down, let's take a look at what I think of when I hear the word divide or division. To my mind, breaking, broken, pieces, parts, that's what comes to my mind when you talk about divide or division, to me. And maybe some of you had some other pictures that came to your head. So the next question I'm going to ask you is, have you seen division so far in this course? We didn't really say divide or division, but did the concept of breaking or making into pieces have appeared in this course so far? So go ahead and think about if you have seen this concept so far. If you said no to this, Please think again. Well, you actually have seen concepts like that right at the beginning when we started looking at we have a whole divided into pieces and then that represents three out of four. So we took a whole and we divided it into a smaller chunks and then we took three of those four. So technically when you're studying fractions, you're actually looking at division. So division and all the other operations are connected to each other. How? We know that subtraction is the inverse operation of addition. So division you can think of as inverse operation of multiplication. Remember, addition was connected to multiplication because we said multiplication was repeated addition, at least for whole numbers. So division can be thought of as repeated subtraction. So you can have a visual concept of how multiplication, we use the cross symbol. We use division, we have a bar with two dots, represents division symbol. Multiplication and division undo each other. And multiplication is repeated addition, whereas division is repeated subtraction. Division is going to be a binary operation, which is this bar with two dots. That's the symbol we use for division. And the way it's defined is for any three mathematical objects, A, B, and C, where B is not zero, A divided by B. That's how you read this. A divided by B is equal to C if and only if a is the product of B and C. Again, A divided by B is C if and only if the product of B and C gives you A. So in this notation, A divided by B equaling C, A is called the dividend, B is called the divisor, and the result of this division is called the quotient. So again, A is called the dividend, B is called the divisor, and C is called the quotient. We say that B divides A completely if and only if B is a factor of A. So for example, 2 divides 6 because 2 is a factor of 6. We can write 6 as 2 times 3. Another way to say that would be 6 divided by 2 is 3. So another way to represent A divided by B is A over B. In the 1800s, they also have shown how people used to use the little slash, which also means A divided by B. So there are many different notations that have existed before this division sign. It might be worth your while to go look at the history of division. 
Remember, like we said before, the notation that we currently use for arithmetic symbols is not that old. In the olden days, really olden days, like thousands of years ago, people used to write A with no bar but B under it without the bar to represent fractions. So when we were looking at multiplication, we looked at 6 as 2 times 3, 2 rows of 3 objects or 3 rows of 2 objects. So there are two ways of interpreting division. We have 6 divided by 2. One interpretation is 2 times what gives you 6? Or how many in each group if you wanted two groups? So you want two groups, how many in each group if you wanted six objects? So that's like saying you want two rows of objects for a total of six objects. How many objects in each row? So here's one row, two rows. Each had three objects in it, so the answer would be three. Gr three objects in each group. So this is the how many in each group interpretation. Take a look at if I had something times 2 equaling 6. That would be how many groups. So we're saying put two objects in each group. How many groups would you get? So how many rows would you get? Another way of saying that. So if I put two objects, I 1, 2. You just start putting 2 at a time, 2 at a time, until you exhaust 6. And you can see the answer is 3. So two different interpretations of uh, division. Let's see if we can extend our concept of whole number division to polynomial division, just like we did with multiplication. So do you remember what to do? We say 32 goes into 6, so none, 0. So now we have to look at 67. 32 times what comes closest to 67, so that would be a 2. And so now what? We take the 2 and we say 2 times what? 3 is 6, and 2 times 2 is 4. So 2 times 32 will be 64. And then we subtract. Because division is repeated subtraction. So if we take away 2 times 32, that will be 64. We're left with a 3, because 67 minus 64 would be a 3. What do we do next? We have another extra digit here, so that will be a 6. So we bring the 6 down, and now we have 36. So 32 times what comes closest to 36? That would be a 1. So we put a 1 here, and then 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 2 is 2. So 1 times 32 would be 32. And we do another subtraction. Our leftover would be a 4. The way we can write our answers is that our quotient for this problem is 21. In other words, 32 goes into 676, 21 whole times with leftover of 4 or a remainder of 4. In other words, the fraction 676 over 32 can be written as 21 whole and 4 over 32, or 21 and 4 32nd. How can we expand that process to the polynomial division? Take a look. We'll do the exact same thing. 3x plus 2, this was 32, which is 3 times 10 plus 2. We said multiply by 2. So if we do the same, we need to know 3x times what will get us 6x squared. So it won't just be 2, but 2x instead of, because this really wasn't here a 2 or 20. 20 is 2 times 10, so in this case it will be a 2x. Remember, all the 10s get replaced with x's when you're working with polynomials. So now what? We need to know 2x times 3x plus 2. So you can make a form i as only column, multiply those, and what will you get? You have 2x times 3x will give you 6x squared. 2x times 2 will give you a plus 4x. So let's put that down here. And remember, we are repeated subtraction, so you are subtracting it. And so we have 6x squared minus 6x squared, which will be nothing, 0. 7x minus a positive 4x, which means you're removing 4x from the 7x, which will leave you with 3x. So we have this plus 6. Just like over here on the 
whole number division. So we take the plus 6 and we bring it down. And now we want to know 3x plus 2 times what comes closest to 3x plus 6. So that would be a 1. So that means we're going to have to have a plus 1. 1 times 3x is 3x. 1 times a positive 2 is a positive 2. And we want to subtract that. 3x minus 3x is 0. 6 minus a 2 is a 4. It's very important that you keep track of this negative sign so that you can follow all the way through. And so in terms of our answers, our quotient would be 2x plus 1. Remainder will be 4. And so the answer to the division problem, 6x squared plus 7x plus 6 divided by 3x plus 2 will be 2x plus 1 plus 4 over 3x plus 2. Look at the parallels between the processes. There's nothing new here except all the tens got replaced with x's. So there's a parallel structures on polynomials just like there is on whole numbers. We can add, subtract, multiply, divide exactly the same way. Pause the video here and see if you recall how to do the whole number and polynomial division that we just saw before and then we'll discuss it together. Assuming you've come back, let's take a look. We have 24 times 2 is 48. Do the subtraction, we get 19. Bring the 4 down. Then 24 times 8 will give me 192. And that will give me remainder of 2. So 674 divided by 24 is 28 whole plus 2 remainder. Now remember, we said that we can also keep going making a decimal. So I can put a 0 here and a point there. So I can bring the 0 down. 24 times nothing is going to give you 20, so it will be 0. Then we can pull another 0 down here. All right, then what? 0, so 200. So that would be, what, times 8 again, which is 192 we saw before. Subtract, get an 8. So another 0 down here, which will give you what? So 24 times 3 which will give you 72, and look, 8, so it looks like it repeats. So another way to write this would be what? Since the 8 is repeating, 28.083 repeating with the bar just on its head, just on the head of the 3. So that's the decimal number uh, division if you want it to keep going and get a repeating decimal. But otherwise, you can leave the answer here in some cases. 28 is your whole number quotient, and 2 would be your remainder. So let's see what we can do with polynomials then. In polynomials, they're going to work the same way. So we're going to have 2x plus 4 times what gets closest to this polynomial? All right, well, we can't really see how this is going to happen. You don't look at the whole number at once. You looked at the highest term first, which was the 6 in this case. So I look at the highest term here, which is the 6x squared. 2x times what gives me 6x squared? That's my 3x here. 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. Except now I have to make sure that I do 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 4 is my 12x. That's how you write this polynomial. Just like here, we wrote 2 times 24 is 48. So 3x times this whole polynomial is the answer here. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 4 is 12x. Now you have to do a subtraction. So let's do this subtraction. 6x minus 12x is going to give you negative 6x. Just remember to have this minus sign all the way across. 6x squared minus 6x squared, that will be gone. The plus 4 is going to come down now, just like you had to bring this 4 down. So now what? 2x times what gives you negative 6x? Can you think of it? 2 times 3 is 6, so I would need a negative 3. And now multiply again. So negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Negative 3 times 4 is going to be negative 12. So then you have to remember to do the subtraction. Negative 6x 
minus minus 6x will make it plus 6x. So those will add up to 0. 4 minus minus 12 will make it 16. Now, 2x times nothing is going to give you 16 because no matter what number you put, you're going to get something x. So that means you're done. So your quotient is 3x minus 3, and your remainder is 16 over the divisor, which is 2x plus 4. All right? So look at the similarity between those two. You look exactly the same way. You take this number times what gets closest here, do subtraction, and you keep going. Same thing here. You look at this polynomial, look at what comes closest to 6x squared, pick that, keep going until you get a remainder. In decimal numbers, one thing you can do is you can just keep going until you get a repeating pattern. So go ahead, pause the video, and see what you can do on your own. In polynomials, one thing you may want to make sure is that whatever you are dividing, the divisor and the dividend, dividend is this first quantity, divisor is the second quantity, is always written from highest power to lowest power. If any degree term is missing, put a placeholder of a 0 x to the whatever power is missing. So in this case, 4x to the 4th plus 0x to the 3rd minus 1x squared plus 1x minus 2. Rewrite it and then continue. So go ahead, pause the video here, see what you can do on your own. And then we'll discuss it together. So what are we going to do? It doesn't really matter how long these polynomials are. What's most important to remember here is just make sure you have a placeholder for every degree term. So this is second degree, first degree, zero degree. Fourth degree, there is no cube term, so we're going to put a zero x cubed as a placeholder for the x cubed term. And then write the rest because we have all those other terms. Now, 2x squared times what is 4x to the fourth? So 2 times 2 is 4. x squared times x squared will give me x to the fourth. So let's do that. But now what? You're going to take 2x squared times 2x squared is going to be 4x to the fourth. 2x squared times negative x is going to give you negative 2x. 2x squared times negative 2 is going to give you negative 4x squared. Now, once you have all these terms written, what do you have to do? You have to do a subtraction. So let's see. Negative x squared minus minus will make it plus 4x squared giving you a 3x squared. 0x cubed minus minus will make it a plus 2x cubed. 4x to the 4 minus 4x to the 4 will cancel each other out. So now you're going to pull out x and pull down the negative 2. Now, 2x squared times what is going to give you 2x cubed? So 2 is already there, so we just need an x, so plus x. So again, multiply them. So x times 2x squared is my 2x cubed. x times negative 1x is going to give me negative x squared. x times negative 2 is going to give me negative 2x. And then finish off the subtraction. So 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is gone. 3x squared minus minus x squared will give me 4x squared. x minus minus 2x will give me plus 3x, bring down the minus 2. So 2x squared times what will give you 4x squared, so that will be a plus 2. And then multiply it out again, 2 times 2x squared is 4x squared. 2 times negative x is negative 2x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and do the subtraction. So 4x squared minus 4x squared gone. 3x minus minus 2x will make it 5x. Negative 2 minus minus 4 will give me plus 2. 2x two squared times nothing will give you 5x because you'll get x squared or higher power. So we're done then. This is your quotient and this is your remainder. Quotient and remainder. All right, pause the video here. See what you can do on your own, and then I will stop the problem and you will check your answer with me and we'll go over it together. So go ahead and do that. 
It doesn't matter how long the problem is, just remember what are our techniques? Breathe, focus, slow down, don't be distracted, just one term at a time, one thing at a time, keep track of your toolbox. Come on, you can do it. Don't just sit there for me to do the problem. I know I'm not there with you, but unless you take initiative and do things on your own, you will not know whether you understood the concept or not. Because eventually you have to do it on your own anyway. So go ahead, try it on your own. Come on, let's go, let's go. You can do it. I've done it all for you. We're just going to walk through it to make sure you understand. So x times 6x to the 4 is going to give me 6x to the 5th. 6x to the 4th times 2 is going to give me 12x to the 4th. So that number times all of that is this polynomial. Once you have that, remember you're going to subtract now. Subtraction means if you don't put parentheses there, make sure you make the subtraction go all the way through. So that will become a minus and that will become a minus. So that minus that will give you 0. 0x zero to the 4th minus 12x to the 4th will give you negative 12x to the 4th. Now, x times negative 12x cubed is going to give you negative 12x to the 4th. Negative 12x cubed times 2 is going to give you negative 24x cubed. Again, that minus sign goes all the way through, so that will make it plus. Those two will give you 0. Negative 5x cubed plus 24x cubed will give you 19x cubed. Now, x times 19x squared will give you 19x cubed. 19x squared times 2 is 38x squared. Again, that minus sign will make these two become minus. So those two will give you 0. Positive 8x squared minus 38x squared will give you negative 30x squared. Negative 30x times x is negative 30x squared. Negative 30x times 2 is negative 60x. So again, that minus sign and that will make it plus, that will make it plus, those two will give you 0, 10x plus 60x will give you 70x, the negative 12 can be pulled down, and now plus 70 times x will give you 70x, plus 70 times 2 will give you 140. Again, that minus sign distributes across, so here and here, those two will give you negative 152, and now nothing times x will give you a number because you always get something x. So this is your quotient and this is your remainder. And so that's the final answer. Just remember to switch the signs when you are doing the subtraction so you don't make any mistakes.